Good morning guys and girls, so quarter to nine on Saturday the 30th of July and I'm currently making prot in here with some of our new purchases from yesterday well I say some of our new purchases, one of them so what I'm having is, or what we are having True Teen Birthday Cake so apparently according to the guys from Protein Pick and Mix store they said that the flavouring of True Teen is unrivalled uh, I've had it before but not for a long long time so uh, I just tried a little bit, just mixed it with water, tried a bit. It is epic. Okay. So this tub, which is like, I think it's just a kilo, was 28 99 So actually not too bad. Um, and the macros are awesome on this. So serving size one level scoop. That annoys me. Okay. Because I like my stuff in grams. Uh, it says one level scoop. And that's not always the most accurate. And I'm all about that accuracy. But first serving, 120 calories. 0 0.5 grams of fat. 4 grams of carbs and 24 grams of protein so mostly protein and actually a lot better than um, a lot of the other protein powders I have so that's awesome it tastes great so I'm going to be having that so just the standard oats, chia seeds, courgettes, some egg whites and stuff as well anyway in terms of weight so I had two kind of higher days uh, over the last couple of days I've got 172 this morning which I'm actually really really happy with it's certainly you know it's three pounds off my lowest weight in but I usually wake up like 173, 174, so it, it suggests that good things are happening. So, going to be really, really active today. I've uh, got a lot to do, got some cooking to do, some bit of work to do, and going to train as well. Uh, and also going to make some fish cakes using this fish pie mix that I have. Um, so, going to be making those as well. So, a uh, pretty busy day, lots to do, but first of all, going to enjoy some breakfast. Okay, so just putting the finishing touches to my butternut squash and fish pie mix fish cakes so just starting off by putting them in kind of portions here so I've got eight and then once that's done straight into this egg so it's just basically just an egg beaten up and then kind of mold that around on top of a bed of breadcrumbs and then we're just going to grab a few more kind of just massage it all in so give it a little pat little turn, little pat, little turn just kind of keep doing that until we get this kind of burger looking fish cake just like that okay and then what we're going to do is stick this in the fridge for maybe a couple of hours to set and then fry those in a pan so we're going to have these for lunch today probably with a massive salad um, <laughs> as we do all the time and I imagine I'll be taking a picture of this and putting it on my blog as well but this just goes to show that I do actually make this stuff I'm not just making it up and <laughs> posting random pictures so yeah that's what we're gonna have for lunch just coming up to 1 p.m. now and ready for some lunch we have Charlotte on salad duty so loads of salad there and then I'll be cooking the fish cakes that I just made but basically just spent the last hour or so doing a little bit of work, but also writing up my new program. So I had a little bit of a mare last week. I think this kind of is kind of what triggered um, the fact that I had that kind of earlier refeed. Also the fact that it was my anniversary and stuff as well. But I was, um, you know, I was just getting really frustrated with how my training was going. Uh, you know, weights that I was doing, I think I had to do 165 for sets of three and I couldn't do it for more than one. It was it was just really rough and really horrible, and I had to drop it down to 155, and I was just doing sets of three at that. But before my prep started, 155, I probably could have got for maybe seven or eight. I think I got 150 for ten, so I definitely probably think could have got 155. And you know, I was struggling on sets of three, so changed my training program around to more of an RPE based system, which is basically where I go based on feel. I'm hoping that will kind of take the stress off me and I can just go in and train as hard as I can for that day, uh, especially for the last five weeks as I'm five weeks out tomorrow. Uh, I'm hoping that is kind of going to help with kind of training motivation because training motivation is a bit <laughs> at the moment. So uh, hopefully that will help. And yeah, so we're going to eat this, probably head into town. I've got a few things I need to do in town and go and train and do all that stuff. So I'll probably see you at the gym. So as per usual, go out to do something, get completely sidetracked by food and pick up a load of bargains instead. Loads and loads of veg, so we've got some butternut squash, cucumber, loads of courgette spaghetti, I eat this stuff all the time. 
loads of boodles, and then loads of fruit, mango, melon free salad. Charlotte is choking. <laughs> um, that seems, I don't know, just loads and loads of stuff. And this all got, only came to like 25 quid, which is pretty good. Also, possibly, next best thing, single serving pizza. So we have this M&S Woodfire Ultra Thin Pizza Salami, and it is only 394 calories and 16 grams of fat. So you can effectively just have this whole thing to yourself for not that many calories. So I will be trying that very, very soon. Okay, so new program time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm kinda of gonna let this run through. I'm just gonna discuss my new way of programming. I say my, it's not mine, and I say new, it's not new. It's just the new way that I am doing it. So traditionally, I, especially over the past kind of year or so for myself and the majority of my clients, I've been doing percentage-based programming. And I've spoken about this in previous vlogs, how I like percentage-based programming because you can almost guarantee a result, or at least you can see progression over time. And it's a lot easier to program for progression. And the majority of the time, people, including myself, progress. Now, when you are contest prepping, it's very, very different. When you are gaining and you can eat all the calories and all the foods and get all the sleep, then it's fine and easy to progress. And you can pretty much guarantee that when you're doing 80%, you're going to hit X amount of reps. Now, when you're on prep, you're, everything is up and down a little bit more. So your mood and your energy levels and things like that. So I'm actually following an RPE-based system which was introduced or introduced to the mainstream first by Mike Tuchera of RTS Training Systems. So to give you an example, uh, in this workout at the start, I did sets of five at 150 squats at an eight RPE. So I felt like I probably could have got seven on that weight, but I stopped too shy of failure. And then what I have is a fatigue percentage. And all that basically means is that I dropped the weight by a certain percentage and I keep doing sets until I get to an RPE 8 again. So in this case, I basically did 150 at an RPE 8. And then I dropped it to 145. And I just kept doing sets of 5. I think I managed 3 or 4 sets of 5 until I got to RPE 8 again. So I'm doing that for a lot of my main lifts. It sounds complicated, but it's easier on a spreadsheet and it's easier to kind of see what's happening. But essentially, you're doing a top set, then a few back off sets until you feel that it was about as hard as the top set. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing for a lot of my main lifts. So my squats, deadlifts, bench and stuff like that. And then I'm adding a few more exercises. So trying to really work on the posterior chain, which is why I introduced some glute bridges, which I haven't really done that much of before. I've obviously done them, but not really done them that much. Uh, I've got some dumbbell IDLs. So I'm only deadlifting heavy once a week, uh, purely because I couldn't recover. So just doing some dumbbell RDLs means I can still hit that posterior chain without the necessary fatigue that you get with very heavy deadlifts. So just did like 40 kilos, I think it was, with straps. Save my grip. Then some calf raises and finish off with some standing ab crunches. And I like these. They just feel a little bit different to the kneeling ones, but roughly the same movement. So that is the session done. Heading back now for some spaghetti and meatballs, which Charlotte is gonna be cooking up. Aren't you dear? Yes. And then probably some fluff for dessert. So I'll show you how to make fluff for those of you that don't know as well. So yeah, heading back to do that. Got a few other bits and pieces to do, but probably just chill out for the rest of the evening and basically show you what I'm going to eat. Okay, so here we are, 8.30 on a Saturday night. Are we out on the town getting hammered? No. We're enjoying some awesome food whilst watching Food Network. It took me 12 weeks. <laughs> I got 12 weeks through prep before I started watching Food Network. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to show you what we are having. So, we have some cooked aubergine here. So, uh, 100 grams of that, about 100 grams of that. We have some spaghetti boodles. So these are butternut squash noodles. We have some courgette, so um, courgette, obviously, made into spaghetti. And then we have muscle food giant beef meatballs. So these aren't the lean ones. These are like, I think about 17 grams of fat for the whole lot, uh, but they taste good, along with a tomato, spicy tomato sauce that Charlotte has prepared with. So it's loaded vegetables, mushrooms, onions, um, some tomato puree, chopped tomatoes, oregano, 
Liam Perrin's beef stock and some salt and pepper and paprika and some sriracha. Sriracha? Sriracha. Sriracha. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna enjoy this and then have a little bit of dessert after. Honestly, this shit is absolute torture. She's just making donuts and toffee and uh. This is lovely by the way, darling. Lovely by the way. I made you this cool dressy. <laughs> shit. Shot <laughs> <laughs> myself right in it. <laughs> okay, so we are going to make the ultimate high protein volume dessert. So we're gonna start off with there's 330 grams, and the only reason it's 330 is because that is all the berries I have. I was going to use 400. Um, frozen berries, we're going to get those out. They're going to thaw for a little while because they're a little bit too hard, uh, a little bit too tough to blend up properly. And then we're going to do two scoops of this true team. Now, I'm pretty sure I've used this before in terms of making fluff, but I'm not 100% certain that it's going to work. It works best with blends and casein protein. If you try to do it with whey, it usually doesn't fluff up that well. Uh, so we're going to try this one because this is like 45% casein. So hopefully this will work. Uh, the trick is to use as little milk as possible. So we're going to use a little bit of almond milk just to kind of loosen it up a little bit and then we're gonna stick it into the standing mixer. So 330 grams of fruit, two scoops of protein, and then we're gonna use a little bit of milk, enough just to kind of get it into a real thick paste, and then we're gonna fluff it up. We're gonna use about 60 ml, a quarter cup of almond milk, all right? So like I said, try and use as little as possible. I may need to add to this, but you remember you can always add, but you can't take away. So just use an unsweetened almond milk. Gonna put that on the top. And that's just going to help it blend up, really. Okay, so you can see it's kind of going into a little bit more of a thick paste now. And sometimes you're going to have to just stop it from blending. And just kind of push it all down and get it all together. Okay, so now we've got this into a thick paste, we're going to transfer it to the mixing bowl. Now, if you don't have uh, a standing mixer like this, that's absolutely fine. You just use a hand blender, like a, it's got to be like an electric whisk, you won't be able to do it by hand. Uh, but fortunately, we have one of these, so it, it does work better if you've got one of these. So we're just going to put this in the bowl and then turn it on the highest setting possible. So we're going to leave that for around about three to five minutes until it all flaps up. Okay, so if you're ready, please, you can also add some something on as well. So we got this from my protein. You get this in Sigmox as well. It's usually the bacon section or the gluten free section. Also, if you can't really hear me that well, it's because the white post stopped working on my camera, so I'm going to have to take that back to start away. Um, but yeah, you can put this in, make sure you only put half a teaspoon in, otherwise it will play up and you'll feel like you've eaten something and you shouldn't have done because, I don't know, it's just the gum and the texture of it. But anyway, we've got half a teaspoon in this and it is fluffing up nicely. So it's a little bit loose, but we're going to have to eat this straight away. But look at the size of that. So that is literally size of my head. <laughs> big head. Um, two scoops of protein and 330 grams. So there's not a whole lot of calories in here, but a ton of volume. Right then guys, so it is five to midnight and time for us to go to bed because yeah, we're tired from such a busy day of making food and going to the gym. Sounds like such a dull life, but we enjoy it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, gonna take the microphone back tomorrow. I'm really pissed off that the microphone stopped working, so I'm gonna try and take that back or at least kind of get it exchanged or whatever. And what else we gotta to do tomorrow? Probably uh, a recipe. We're gonna train routine. again and do a rest another recipe. Pretty much same as today, but maybe some new stuff. Who knows? But anyway, make sure you check that one out as well. 
Thanks as always for watching. Make sure to like the video if you like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video.